tonight our first guest who quite frankly is one of Britain's finest acting talents on both stage and on screen and it's not just us who think so his most recent role on the West End stage saw him nominated for best actor at last weekend's Olivier Awards please welcome the ever so wonderful Rupert Everett <laughs> So the Olivier's, because last time you were on, you were I telling lost. us about There's the There's no point talking about it. <laughs> yes, I knew. I said to Carol, don't bring she it up. Oh, God, get there is nothing worse than going to an award ceremony and losing. You might as well eat an electric light bulb. <laughs> You're taking it really well, then. No, I was. It was just miserable. It was a Aww. miserable experience. Did you do the miserable face though, when they no, come to you? No, I did you practiced all it? week my carefree rictus of defeat. <laughs> you know, which is they don't teach you about that in drama school. No. Nope. Actually, I've had two very big challenges in acting recently. First of all, doing a coffee commercial because actually sipping oh, yes. a cup of coffee and going. And then looking into a camera, carefree, jolly, effervescent, vibrant. Mm. Very difficult. Yeah. Also very difficult. Looking like a, you know. Nice loser. <laughs> yeah, you just want to say... Happy loser. Yeah, happy loser. Did you have a speech ready? Well, no, that's the other thing. Because <laughs> you practice losing so much, you can't bring yourself to write a speech. So, in one sense, you're terrified of winning as well. At least I am. I'm yeah. not very good uh, Thanking on other the people. podium. No, thanking other people's fine. But mm -hmm. you, you're meant to do something witty and, and you know, really say something funny, about... Yeah, yeah. That's, that's difficult. <laughs> no, you yeah. had rave reviews for uh, your play, The Jesus Kiss. I know, I did have rave, rave reviews. And, and, and you know, I, it's, I've got nothing to complain about. It's been a great run. It's just when you go to an award ceremony, obviously, you want to win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Tell the people watching who might not have, have seen the play what it was about. Oh, The Judas Kiss, everyone, is a play written by David Hare, great play, mm. about uh, Oscar Wilde, uh, the Irish poet and dramatist who went to prison basically for being gay in 1895 and served hard labour and had to leave England afterwards. And uh, it's really an extraordinary play, particularly extraordinary the night that gay marriage had been um, voted into the um, into, yeah. in Parliament. Oh, because right. playing that play that night was really quite something. Mm -hmm. um, really, really moving because, you know, he was you know, just destroyed, really, just for being gay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And there's nudity in it, isn't there? A lot of nudity. Yes, yeah, so was how did that... Oh, <laughs> yes, no, people loved it. The funny thing, nudity's changed in the theatre slightly. Yeah. In the old days, people felt terribly shocked to yes. see nude people. Yeah. Now, everyone kind yeah. of wanted a karaoke party to start. <laughs> and, and I think we had two nude guys, and they were more popular than the rest of us, totally. <laughs> Easily. And sometimes I'd be doing acting, acting up, up a storm, and I'd see like tons of like gay guys taking up the front three rows, and I would, I could have set fire to myself as one of them passed by. <laughs> 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 like that. You had a, recently. I saw you do your Professor Higgins in Pygmalion, and right. you were absolutely brilliant. Oh, thank you. And I took my daughter because I thought it would be a good introduction to, to, to Bernard Shaw, and it, she loved it. So thank you. It's a great play. You were am amazing. That you're getting these fantastic iconic roles, aren't you, now? Is it because you're maybe a bit more mature, or...? <laughs> what do you reckon, Ruth? Well, do you know, all the jobs... I kind of organised... I don't think I'd have ever had a job for the last 15 years if I hadn't uh, generated it myself. Um, really? So all, all, most jobs I, I do are things I try and organise. Pygmalion was an idea that uh, I had to do with, with the director, Philip Prowse, and we took it to uh, Chichester, and um, the Judas Kiss was something I very much wanted to do because I'd also written a screenplay about Oscar Wilde, which I'm trying to get made. Um, right. And um, I was longing to play the character to right. see uh, how it would go. So, so um, you pursued those opportunities. But yes, you know, I probably, if, if what you're saying is, have I grown up? Yes, I probably have. You know, I'm 54 now, so I'm Oof. not... I'm not very good on We've known each other for ages. We I, had dinner I, this week. I know, we did have dinner last week. And I also worked with you when you were at your very horrible stage. And and mirror, mirror, <laughs> mirror, you <laughs> were not going either, but... <laughs> No, when your head was very, very big. Um, <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> no, when he was troublesome. Uh, one thing I did want to say, though, in the past you've said that it's not a good idea for gay actors to come out. Do you still stand by that? I don't think... I never said it's not... A, I think people must do what they have to yeah. do. Mm. My point was, I don't think that if someone doesn't want to come out, I don't think they should be forced out. That's a decision you make with the universe and everyone uh, and everyone has their own their own version of things i think it's not ideal it's not say. good for your career it's not it? ideal to be gay and to try and be a leading man for example on the other hand it depends what it depends what you want to achieve from your career i'm not 
I don't, I don't point my finger at people who haven't done it. If, if you wanted to have a really great career and hide something about yourself, that's your deal. My deal about it always was, I just think lying to everyone puts you in a very weak position. Mm. Uh, it means yeah. you can't do anything. It's, I mean, if you can lie to everyone and really keep it up, so much the better. But it's a very difficult thing to do. Was it worse when you went to America, though? When, when you Not really, because when I went to America, I w went on a gay magic carpet, really, because <laughs> I, I, got this, I got this role in the big Hollywood movie playing yeah, a gay. And so I suddenly I was like something from Outer Space. Ooh, a real gay playing a real gay. <laughs> So I benefited from that, and everyone would ask me about being gay as if it was, I was the first person it had happened no. to. Like, you know, and that no one had known anyone. <laughs> Rather like Beyonce and being pregnant in her documentary. <laughs> no one had ever been pregnant before Beyonce. Never. No one. Well, no one had ever been in love before Beyonce. No. It's extraordinary. It is extraordinary. Now, earlier this year, you came on and told us about your second set of memoirs, yeah. The Vanished Years. Now, that was received wonderfully. Now it's out in paperback. Yes, and I got a prize for that too, which was very exciting. Yeah. You did get I a prize for yeah. that, did you? Yeah. Did you have a speech written for it? Uh, I didn't. I just said thank you because uh, I'm not. I'm just one of the things I'm not very good at in our business is podium chat. When you're on your own, I like <laughs> in a group I can do, but on your own, yeah. it's very. It's really hard. Really what hard. award did you get for that then? I got the Sheridan Morley uh, Award oh. for theatrical um, <laughs> banter. <laughs> by his wife, and he was the son of Robert Morley. None of you will yeah. know who yes, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous actor. He was a great critic and theatre person, and, and so it was, it was very... And funny. it's been received wonderfully, hasn't it? It's I gone mean, the really, critics really, have really loved well. It. Yeah, I've had yeah. it. It's been lovely, yeah. yeah. So will there be another book? I'm going to do a third one in right. that series, and then I'm going to uh, try and move on to some real fiction. <laughs> <laughs> another one are you worried about libel because yeah I mean I've known you for ages and you said before and in private you're so rude about everybody when you oh. <laughs> Janet no <laughs> that's just like keeping going we were at a dinner party the other day and I'm such a, I'm very naive at dinner parties because if you go too long for drinks beforehand Every, you have your glass filled up, and if you, I just have a drink when I have my dinner at home. Blunk, 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 three glasses, and that's it. But when you go out for dinner, and they sit around for an hour, and you just keep on talking, I was plastered. Hey! <laughs> I, I could very hardly loud. move to the point where, when Andrew Lloyd Webber arrived, uh, he's doing this amazing new musical about a character called Stephen Ward. And he, I should be Stephen Ward. Shouting <laughs> <laughs> the place down. It was really embarrassing. <laughs> We were talking about mortality earlier, uh, and <gasps> in that book you've written about some of the people you were very close to who mm. died. Do you think about your own mortality? All, all the time, but then I come from a particular generation that tons of people I knew started dying when I was about 17 mm. uh, in the early 80s uh, and the late 70s of, of age, okay. so mm. I felt very with death really up close for the first few years of HIV you couldn't test for it so when my whole career started I thought I was on on, on a death sentence mm. I remember once I was doing this mini series called Princess Daisy and you can see it in the film I was bitten by a mosquito I know this sounds rather cheap now and I thought I looked at the mosquito bite and I thought fuck this is it so oh I thought, okay, sorry, apologies, sorry, sorry. apologies. Uh, I thought, oh my god this is it I've got I've got a terrible disease and you can see in the film Tourette's I just uh, <laughs> That is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is it, and um, and you can see if you saw the film that I'd stopped acting for one. I said, oh, well, what's the point of bothering anymore? I'm gonna, and so oh, no. one really lived in that time, feeling like a cartoon character that had run over the edge of a cliff yeah. and was about to fall down. So it's something that I think has always been close to me, and I think it's necessary to live and die all the time. That's a, really, really one of the yeah. main secrets of life, dying to everything. Because actually you see it in your relationship. You build up in your relationship all this past. So it, by, after, by year five in your relationship, for example, you cannot really see the person as they are now. You see them in the build-up of stuff that you've got in your brain. Mm. If you could die to all that, then relationship, for example, would, be, would remain fresh. I know it's, a, it's, it's easier said than done, but yeah. I think it is the secret of life, dying. And I think we ignore it and avoid it and are so terrified by it. Yeah. But in fact, it's, a, it's the secret of everything, really. Because each breath is over. Yeah. Not Very just true. a life, yeah. and not just your grandmother, and not just each breath, each moment, each thought is over. It's gone. And,
Rupert, we wish you all the very best with Vanished Years in paperback form. And uh, thank you, the ever troublesome Rupert Everett. <laughs> And we do apologise for some fruity language earlier on. Right, competition time again, and if you fancy...